Hey everybody, I hope everybody's settling in well and uh, your semesters are off to a good start. I wanted to take a few minutes with you today to walk you through uh, basically how to read a social scientific uh, academic research article. If you're like me when I was in college, right, especially when it came to some of these social scientific research articles, you probably really didn't have any clear idea how to approach these articles, especially where you start to see statistics and formal theory. Um, you know, and you will be encountering some of that in this course, but I want to walk you through some quick tips uh, uh, concerning how to, uh, you know, sort of digest this material more effectively and efficiently, and hopefully some of these tips will help you with your other readings as well. Okay, so point number one, read the abstract. This is a really obvious point, but there's a lot of really useful material in the abstract. The authors should walk you through essentially what the big idea is, what's motivating the paper, uh, you know, what they're focused on, but they should also give you a little bit of an idea as to what their theoretical argument is and what sorts of methodological tools or analytical approaches they're adopting uh, to answer their research question or their motivating question. They should also give you a little bit of an idea as to what they're finding. So this is a really great place to start off to get a snapshot of what you're in for. Tip number two. Read the introduction. Again, a somewhat obvious point, but it becomes a little bit less obvious after this. Uh, the introduction is kind of like an expanded abstract. Uh, the abstract is usually about 150 to 200 words, but the introduction can be two or three pages, maybe more, depending on the article. Uh, and it really expands on everything that you're going to find in the abstract, right? It should give you a fuller idea of what's motivating the paper, what the focus of the research project is, what questions they're trying to answer, what methods and theory they use to answer those questions, and ultimately what they find, right? What is the product of this research agenda? They should give you a little bit of a snapshot there as well. Three, read the conclusion. Uh, all of us have probably wrestled at one point or another with whether or not you skip ahead and read the end of the book, and that's okay, especially in this context. Um, you should read the abstract, the introduction, and then go ahead and skip everything else and read the conclusion. Like the introduction, the conclusion should really expand upon the material that you've gotten in the abstract and in the introduction, but it should give you a little bit uh, more information with respect to uh, what the authors have actually uncovered throughout the paper, more than you probably get in the introduction. The authors should also give you some sense of what the, the broader takeaways are and what avenues for future research still exist after uh, you come away from this paper. Step number four, um, skip the text again and just look for the tables and figures in the middle of the paper. Oftentimes, given the complexity and just the enormous amount of material that we have to convey to people, it becomes more effective to uh, convey a lot of that material graphically, visually. So go through the paper and see what, if any, figures you can find and find out what they're telling you, right? This is often a place where you're going to see some key, uh, either expositional material or uh, you know, key material related to findings coming up maybe later in the text but it should give you uh, uh, some insight into what some of the central findings of the research paper are, and in a way that is more readily digestible than trying to comb through all of that text itself. Step five, read the actual paper. This is uh, oftentimes the last step, right? It's when we want to uh, move beyond the broad kind of understanding, the general understanding of what the authors have found, and you wanna develop a deeper understanding of what they've done. It's okay to not read every research paper with a fine tooth comb. That's not how most of us process a lot of this material. That said, we often do want to establish a deeper understanding of the material, and that does require closer scrutiny, uh, but it's all about kind of how much you need to get out of uh, any given paper at any given time. And certainly it's often the case that we tend to reread uh, the same material multiple times, but trying to get something different out of it or looking for something different each time. A couple of additional follow-up points to address here. Uh, first, this approach can serve you well when you are dealing with a wide variety of disciplines. The basic methodologies that we use in political science are very similar, if not identical, to the methodologies that are used in other fields. Uh, that said, there are similar hurdles, right, when you encounter any given research project. You might not know how they're operationalizing variables, how they're measuring variables, what specific modeling strategy they're using, uh, so on and so forth. So it can help to just kind of skim the abstract, the intro and the conclusions before you delve into the, the bulk of the material to give yourself a little bit of a preview. Uh, but in general, most research papers are structured in more or less the same way. 
Uh, disciplines like biology, for example, might spend a little bit less time on exposition and theoretical buildup, uh, whereas in fields like political science and economics and sociology, you might see a little bit more time spent on theory building and discussions of measurement and operationalization of variables uh, that are ultimately going to be used in the models. Now, the last point that I want to add here is things like highlighters and pens can be your friends. I know it's really tempting to read a lot of stuff on, uh, on the computer, uh, given how much stuff you have, and it can be tough to, uh, you know, print things if you don't have ready access to a printer. But if you do, it can be really handy to print off research papers uh, and use a highlighter, mark them up, right? The more actively you're engaged with the material, the more actively you're reading, um, this can really help you to process the material a, a little bit more effectively than if you're just scanning it on a computer screen. You can also use little tips or tricks that might work for you. Uh, like I am increasingly trying to use different highlighters to highlight different sections of the paper, right? You might want to uh, have like a blue highlighter that just focuses on theory uh, and maybe a green highlighter that focuses on just empirics or uh, uh, the analysis, right? What are they finding? Uh, ultimately, it's going to be up to you though to tweak some of these tips and just find out what works best for you. Okay, I hope that helps. I hope this serves you well in this class and I hope it serves you well in all of your other classes. Uh, so again, I hope you have a, a good first week and uh, you know, enjoy your weekend. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.